Now it's time for the markets with Layton, and you say we've had a few volatile days in the grain markets. No, that's the understatement. Understatement, okay. Wednesday, Wednesday's USDA report really rocked the markets, and looking at our headlines, some analysts say $10 a bushel corn and $20 a bushel soybeans may be possible. Meanwhile, drought is also expected to increase feedlot placements of cattle, while hog farmers are forecast to face a year of losses. Our top story in the markets is the surprise in Wednesday's USDA reports, a reduction in the average U.S. corn yield of 20 bushels per acre. The government also slashed some soybean projections. Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley discussed the impact of these new numbers with me Thursday morning. John Michael, some very important changes here for both corn and soybeans in this week's report. Some would call it a shocker. In fact, I saw that uh, headline quite a bit yesterday. Uh, we're going to the corn numbers that were published yesterday in the World Ag Supply and Demand uh, Report estimates. Uh, they dropped the corn yield per acre down by 20 bushel an acre to right at 146. That's a change from 166 a month ago. Uh, trade was looking for that number to be about 152. In fact, the lowest estimate was 147. So it was even outside that, that low end of the range. And, and, and it's just a, a very un, unusual move from USDA. Usually they're very slow, very methodical about how they, they make these changes to the reports from month to month. So that big change was, uh, was very unexpected. But uh, it, I think it speaks to the fact that the corn crop is under a lot of pressure. Crops in the Midwest are very under you know, very dry, very hot conditions. And I think there is a lot of fears out there. It continues to be lots of fears about what that final number will be and uh, you know, the, what, what the impact to yields are. All right, and as far as soybeans, we had a yield reduction there as well, right? That's correct. You probably should say that as well. Uh, 40, right at 40 bushels an acre for soybeans, down uh, three and a half bushel an acre from the previous month, uh, mostly in line with what, what we're expecting. They think 41 was the expectation, so uh, a, little, a little less drastic than, than what we saw in the corn market yesterday. But again, no doubt the bottom line, there is damage to those crops in the Midwest from drought. We don't know that yet because the next month we'll start getting some objective field data in those yield numbers. But I th from all accounts, it, it really, if it isn't, I think it would be a shock if it isn't uh, damage to the corn and severe damage to the crop. All right, and obviously uh, the reaction that, that everybody could see this week, uh, prices skyrocketed as a result of these new numbers. Uh, well, they. We thought they would, and they did at first. But then the market came down as as it was as this report became more and more digested. We saw uh, we saw the the supply numbers drop because of the yield reduction, but we also saw demand reduced, and that's that's not uncommon with this tight supply situation. You're going to see some rationing of both of these crops, and so demand numbers were reduced. Uh, it's still uh, ending stocks are expected to be low, uh, very low stocks to use numbers. So this implication is is going away heavy on the market. But uh, we did see the market react kind of mixed yesterday. Let's look at our trivia quiz as Farm Week continues. Our question is about rice. Here it is. What is the most common and troublesome weed of Mississippi rice? Is it Miss Palmer amaranth, hemp sesbania, barnyard grass, or morning glory? I'll have the answer for you in a few more minutes. The higher corn and soybean prices we talked about just a moment ago certainly don't bode well for animal agriculture. Feed costs will likely go up sharply. In the beef sector in particular, there's also the problem in parts of the country of deteriorating pasture conditions. This situation is expected to increase placements in the feedlots. Analyst Mark Gold told Market to Market recently that higher corn prices alone will keep the pressure on feeder cattle. The feeder cattle were the big drag with corn prices going through the roof. No wonder, you know, feeder cattle takes a huge hit. Uh, we're well off the highs. Uh, we're trying to come back here. We may have seen the worst, particularly if the corn has made its highs in here, then we can see the feeders come back. If we take another dollar jump in the corn, the feeders are going to remain under pressure, and that's going to be a drag on the fat cattle market as well. Extension Area Livestock Agent Mike Howell notes that Cattle Facts says that buyers are looking at next April's live cattle futures to try and determine what to pay for calves this fall. Howell thinks it may be worth consideration for cow-calf producers to look at forward pricing their calves to take advantage of the futures market's April optimism. The calf market's seasonal price trend moves lower into fall. Howell says potential buyers may be reluctant to give as much for calves later in the year if the futures market optimism fades. Well, the quarterly hogs and pigs report from the government was surprisingly not a surprise, according to many analysts. Many market watchers described it as pretty much neutral. 
Analyst Jamie Kohaki recently summarized what those new pork numbers told him. What that report reiterated to me was is producers need to be really nimble with their fourth, fourth quarter through second quarter of next year's sales. And that's talking 82 cents for December and looking out into like February, April too at the 2013 contracts. I think the numbers get big out in there. We're seeing some expansion and uh, of course some will play out. We see how the corn plays out. But I think 82 mark in December to step in with some hedges there next week. Purdue Extension economist Chris Hurt said this week the Midwest drought and its impact on feed prices may create a financial disaster for the hog industry. He notes that higher feed costs cannot be immediately passed on to the consumer, but there are short-term impacts for producers. Farmers sell animals quicker and at lighter weights and even begin the liquidation of some entire herds, especially by this fall. This can result in increased slaughter and may cause some downward pressure on animal prices. And by the time the producers do receive any compensation for higher feed costs, they have been through a prolonged period of losses, a length of time that some farmers may not survive, according to Purdue economist Chris Hurt. Well, we close out this segment, the markets, with that trivia answer we promised to give you, and here it is. A survey this year by the Southern Weed Science Society says that C is the right answer. It's barnyard grass that's the most common weed of Mississippi rice.